because Valve was self-funded, um, and I mean, obviously, you don't have investors. Um, was Steam kind of a way to? I mean, was one of the main goals of Steam to get around having big publishers in the whole system, or? Um, well, the I mean, uh, I mean, Steam really was intended to be uh, a, a, a way of improving. A set of tools that would improve the relationships between content creators and developers it wasn't really a negative. We weren't like trying to get around stuff. You know, it was more like, gee, there seems to be a bunch of opportunities here to improve uh, what we do. Uh, so the example that we use if we're talking to people who are new to the environment is, um, I think we've done something crazy like 250 updates to Team Fortress 2 now. And every one of those updates, we can see how it affects the community on a whole bunch of different variables, like how much trading happens after, before and after we do this. You know, what's the relative value of different assets in this economy? Uh, uh, how are people in Eastern Europe playing? Are they playing more? Are they playing less? And is that different than how they're playing in, in Asia? And, you know, it's, you're sort of limited by the creativity of the questions that you ask. You know, to, and Robin Walker sort of joked that he doesn't actually believe that we ever developed games before we had Steam because it seemed impossible to ever make a single good decision without the ability to incrementally release, you know, changes to the to the experience that you're giving to people and then measure what the results are. So for us, uh, even though it has had these other characteristics, it really was about helping us build better entertainment experiences uh, for our customers and having uh, our partners also be able to take advantage of it. Um, you know, with with one of the things we try to be really sensitive to, and it's you know part of the motivation behind Greenlight is we don't want to sort of perturb the relationship between our partners and their customers. That that's exactly that actually decreases the long term value of what Steam might represent to both consumers and other developers if we start to insert ourselves into it. I think one of the most annoying, that drove me crazy every time we'd sit and, and somebody would say something like, you know, we have to make decisions about what we what we have enough, to, you know, it's like, there's so many uh, PC games that get developed and, you know, we could spend 100% of all of our time sort of filtering through them and making value judgments about these games. And and then going through the, the you know, the production publishing process to get those out. And, you know, the green light was an attempt to get us out of the middle of that because, you know, that's exactly the wrong thing. That's a, that's a destructive in the long term uh, to the value that uh, we have both to our, to our customers and as to our partners is to be filtering or perturbing uh, the connection of customers with, the right pieces of content. Uh, so, you know, that's just, you know, an example of us, you know, having this problem for a while and finally trying to come up with a better, better way that scales up similar to the way that the workshop works.